Welcome to the Excel example for break-even analysis. We're going to go through two examples from the book on how you can conduct break-even analysis. Uh, the first is a single alternative break-even analysis, and the second is a two alternative example. Uh, again, both of these are in the book, and hopefully now, by now you have watched the lectures associated with this so that you know what's happening. So let's start with the first example. A homeowner is considering whether to invest in solar panels. The homeowner has gathered the following information. The average cost of residential energy is 12.4 cents per kilowatt hour. The government subsidizes 70% of whatever is invested by the household. Each square foot of panel produces 19.13 kilowatt hours per year. The cost of the solar panels is 93.91 for installation of each solar panel. Uh, the house has a 350 square foot roof space with a break even point in years for the installation of the solar panel. So let's assume the homeowner has a discount rate of 6%. So the first function we want to solve for where the equivalent worths are equal. The first is the installation of the solar panels, right, which would be the initial investment cost. And we want to know where that is going to be equal to the energy savings in terms of value. So let's calculate it. So roof space, 350 square feet, right? 350 square feet. Cost per square foot is $93.91. And the government subsidy is 70%. So let's calculate the initial investment cost. Now, the government subsidy is basically the government's going to be paying for 70% of the investment by the household. That is for some sort of societal benefit. So the government wants to encourage people to use solar energy. So they are giving them a valued incentive. So the initial investment cost is going to be equal to the amount of roof space times the cost per square foot. And then you're going to save 70%. So for using the homeowner's point of view, the homeowner is only paying 30% or one minus whatever the government is paying. Let's go ahead and do that. And our initial investment is going to be $9,860. So if the homeowner wants to install solar panels to cover the roof, that's going to cost them $9,860, which would mean that the homeowner wants to figure out at what point or how much energy has to be saved to, uh, to meet, the, to have that equivalent value. How much is he saving or she saving? by switching to solar panels. So the cost of energy per kilowatt hour equal to $0.124. I just didn't like the dollar sign. Put that there. there. Kilowatt hours saved per square foot is going to be 19.13. So, the solar energy produced per year is going to be equal to B11, which is the amount of roof space, right? 350 square feet times kilowatt hours saved per square foot. So, the homeowner is saving... 6,695.5 kilowatt hours per year. So basically, the solar panels are producing that much, and therefore they don't have to pay the cost of residential energy, which would go through a power company or something. So now our dollar saved per year is going to be this times the cost of energy per kilowatt hour, and we're saving $830.00 and 24 cents annually by having the 
solar panels installed. Discount rate is 6%. Okay, so now what we want to do is figure out how many years it's going to take us to save or make back our initial invest investment in savings. So you can do this with algebra if you want. That would just involve you going and, you know, setting the initial investment equal to the net present worth of the annual savings and then solving for n so we all know the factor using the time value of money equations and you can calculate that yourself since we're in excel we're going to have excel do some work for us so we're going to say end of year one end of year two here i'm going to calculate this through some graphing methods Dollar saved each year. I'm going to have saved $830.24. Let's just make it exactly equal to that. Okay, so each year we save this. What is the present worth of these savings? Equals 1 divided by 1.0. 1. And then multiply it by that. So here we go. And let's keep a running total of the savings. So how's that going to work? The running total is equal to this. And then the next running total is equal to this plus this, right? So it's going to keep, it's keeping a cumulative amount of our savings. So in year two, we saved 15 total, 1522 total dollars. Uh, in year one, we saved 783. You can see it keeps going up by doing this. All right. The initial investment was $9,860. So by year 22, we have broken even and actually earned a little bit of money. Makes sense? Okay, good. So that is the first example. Hopefully it made good sense to you. Now we're going to talk about a two alternative example. So now let's consider a hybrid vehicle with a sticker price of $31,500. Uh, the vehicle will average 30 miles a gallon. A tax credit of $1,500 to the vehicle effectively reduces the vehicle's sticker price to $30,000. A comparably equipped gasoline-only vehicle will cost $2,800 initially and will only average 25 miles a gallon. So we're going to assume a discount rate of 3% per year and study a period of five years. What is the break-even cost of gasoline if the vehicle will be driven 1,800 miles per year? That's a lot of miles. The discount rate is fairly low, and the study period of five years is reasonable for a, a car's expected life. So let's go ahead and put our values in. For hybrid vehicle, the cost is going to be $30,000. The miles driven is going to be 1,800, 18,000, excuse me. And the miles per gallon is equal to 30. And then for the gas only vehicle, the cost will be And the miles driven will also be 18,000. 18, and then miles per gallon will be 25. Okay. So we want to know at what point you break even. So when does the hybrid cost of the hybrid vehicle equal the cost of the gas vehicle? So for each of these vehicles, the present worth 
is going to be equal to the cost plus the A, which is the miles driven divided by miles per gallon times the cost per, per gallon, right? So that's going to be the A, cost per gallon, is going to be the total annual cost times the miles driven divided by miles per gallon. And then that is going to be multiplied by P over A. Sorry, excuse me. P over A. 3% in five years. So what that means is that this is the formula to calculate the present worth of both the hybrid and the gas vehicle. So what we're going to do is calculate the present worth of both and set them equal to each other. Or you can, again, do algebra, uh, which is not a bad idea. The, we can do the algebra first here also. So we want PW hybrid equals PW gas. And we've got $30,000 plus the 18,000 divided by 30 times the cost per gallon times P over A, 3% five years is going to be equal to 28,000 times 1800 divided by 25, the more miles driven times the same cost per gallon, gas is going to be the same regardless, and then times P over A, 3% five years. Okay, uh, P over A, 3% five years is going to be equal to from the tables, 4.5797. So, that's going to reduce down to is equal to, here, let's just write down the formula, 3000 plus 27. 47.82. So that is the equals right this times right, there we go. So that's what this equals times CPG equals 28,000 plus 3297.38 times CPG. Again, that is equal to this divided by this times present amount factor. So Move this out of the way. Okay, so now to solve for CPG, right, I'm going to subtract this over to here and then move this over to here and solve for the function. So equals 30,000 minus 28,000 divided by 32. 
97.38 minus just a parentheses 2747.8 minus 2747.82 okay that should give us our cost per gallon so basically in five years if you drive 1800 miles at the assumed values with the assumed discount rates and everything the cost of gallon would have to be per gallon would have to be three dollars and sixty four cents before you started saving money by purchasing that hybrid vehicle instead of the gas vehicle um, so what that can indicate is that maybe the tax credit should be a little higher anyways thank you for watching and uh, please get back to the other lecture